Hello everybody, today we are looking at yet another tournament winning deck by Hyped. Mono Blue is something that has exploded in popularity recently and was completely untouched by the card balance changes. This is a deck with a very high win rate and very few counters. Complexity's Petrify ran a red-black build that was designed to counter Mono Blue, but was still defeated by Hyped in the finals at the recent Seed Story Cup, proving not only the skills of Hyped, but also the deck's potency. Let's start with the heroes. Leading off, we have the four best blue heroes in the game. We start with Luna to get her Eclipse passive rolling, Kana for her reliable swarm, and Ogre Magi to get additional value out of any spell you cast. In this version, we have Zeus following up on round two, but him and Ogre Magi are easily interchangeable. Finally, we have Skyrath Mage coming in on round three. Skyrath was added here to provide another board clear by the way of his signature. Even though he has one less health than Earthshaker, he is still the better choice, since Echo Slam is not yet well positioned in the current meta. The deck's win condition is pretty simple, constantly keeping the opposing board in check while getting small amounts of damage in. Apply damage whenever it is possible and aim to get at least two towers to under 20. Once you have stalled long enough and at 10 mana, finish off your opponent with a Bolt of Damocles. It's unlikely that you can focus a single lane and defeat the Ancient, but sometimes Kana plus Prey on the Weak can get you there, however unreliably. There are three copies of Cunning Plan in this deck. These are primarily there to cycle to your board clears, but they can also provide some great utility in the early game by helping your weak blue heroes dodge hits from your opponent's big heroes and grant you further use of their passives. The one copy of Compel serves the same purpose. Diabolic Revelation is present for additional card draw, but you will not want to typically run more than one, as your weak statted heroes don't need any additional help dying. All of the major board clears are present in this deck, for obvious reasons. Three Arcane Assaults are also here to provide you with the initiative needed to be able to cast them without your opponent being able to prepare. The two copies of Sanctum are there to be able to cast multiple draw spells or secure initiative with Arcane Assault. Occasionally, they can also enable a back-to-back -back Bolt of Damocles. Now let's talk about the most confusing card in this deck, Glyph of Confusion. A 6 mana improvement that reads, whenever any unit enters this lane, stun it this round. It is very important to note that this effect is symmetrical. This card has not seen much play until recently and learning how to best utilize this improvement will come with practice. You will usually want to play Glyph in a lane in which you are ahead in, such as a lane with Kana. Having Glyph of Confusion in the lane means that you can keep extending the board state without having to worry about your opponent's heroes jumping in to crash the party. This improvement can also be used to slow down your opponent in a lane, as it's effectively a Clazarim Hourglass for creeps and heroes. To reiterate, however, this effect is symmetrical. You will eventually need to wipe this lane that you are stalling in, and you cannot do that by deploying a hero there and casting a board wipe on the same turn, so plan ahead accordingly. Onto the item deck, we have two Signet Rings to give our squishy heroes a health boost and reduce their bounty for when they get caught in the crossfire of Annihilation. Three Stonehall Cloaks similarly buff your heroes repeatedly so they can scale and survive into the late game. This deck has two Blink Daggers instead of the usual three, because although mobility is necessary, you will generally only have one hero in each lane. They will also spend a lot of time in the fountain, so repositioning isn't too difficult. While your heroes dying is not better than repositioning with Blink, it's what ends up happening most of the time. One copy of Demagicking Maul serves as a meta call to counter Red Green Ramp and its many improvements. Likewise, Jasper Daggers is there as a failsafe to help us cast whatever we need. These two items are flex spots, so you can play around with the quantities or have other inclusions instead. Zeus's passive is one that during games seems to get forgotten or ignored. Playing your cards to set up a board or control will simultaneously cripple the opposing units. Playing two cunning plans in a turn to cycle and deal two piercing damage to the enemy neighbors for no additional cost is a good play, and can set you up for a possible hero kill. Try also to get as many upkeep kills as you can. Ignite killing a hero essentially shuts it out for two turns instead of one. Getting this additional value can push you farther ahead in the game. Remember that your deck has many board clears in it, so don't feel like it's a waste stacking multiple in a lane. Against Red Green Ramp, it'll always feel like you're losing the early game, but the matchup mostly revolves around their opening hand. All you will need to do is constantly clear the board and fight the right opportunity to build a board state of tokens with Dimensional Portal and Prey on the Weak. Diabolic Revelation can help greatly in this situation. Red Green cannot deal with large boards well, so you will be able to sneak in a lot of damage to the tower. The mirror is slightly trickier than it may seem, and keeping initiative in this matchup is perhaps more critical than normal. One thing you could try to do early is stack Stonehall Cloaks to make their damaging spells less efficient, causing them to fall back on Annihilation as their only clear. Try also to always be ahead in cards and spread your units around so their clears are less effective. 
Besides Red Green and the Mirror, your other matchups are generally easier. Although if they have multiple initiative gaining cards, such as Tidehunter's Kraken Shell or Lich's Chain Frost, then things get difficult. In this situation, you will have to play around it by timing your arcane assaults, but it'll always feel like you're losing early, since your set of clears activate around 4, as most require 6 or more mana, and Eclipse requires some charging to be effective. So don't worry if you start losing heroes left and right, as you should be able to pull it back in the late game. The XP bonus win after losing 10 plus heroes is a given in this kind of deck. While this deck does have a very simple win condition and some easy matchups, it does require a lot of decision making. Playing too quickly might cause some rash decisions and your hero dying. Playing too slowly might cause you to have to play against the clock. Hyped in the finals faced the same problem, as he spent a lot of time thinking about his plays. His opponent Petrify kept playing cards quickly to pressure him into making suboptimal decisions. It will take some time to get used to piloting this deck. As usual, control strategies play for the long game, and you'll have to suffer many unoptimal losses before you can confidently evaluate board wipes. Just try to keep the enemy in check and get damage in only when it is absolutely safe. And that's it for Mono Blue. We will have a link in the description to the Seat Story Tournament and Hyped's deck. Let us know what your experience with this archetype is and what kind of build you're running. Thanks for watching, and we will see you next time.